what's going on guys welcome back to the channel so uh finally got done with the dozer you guys have been watching that project decided i got it loaded up on a trailer decided i'm gonna carry it over to my parents house got a little bit of stuff over there and do try this thing out i don't really have anything here in my yard i done fiddled around with it did everything that i can do uh the blade's still just a little bit over width on uh what we narrowed it there making use of my tie down points here i've got uh two individual chains on the back going through the tie down points and then one separate chain looping around just as a precautionary measure don't want anything to uh to get loose and any of that stuff come loose so i've got the those are setting over towards the other side of the trailer a little bit so that when i angle the blade around um, i'm not hanging off over here i'm hanging off uh i don't know about maybe three inches something like that and I got the blade tied down on this side right here so uh you know if i was going to haul this thing around uh more often and do jobs with it i really need more truck a uh, bigger truck to pull it with or maybe a low boy to go behind my semi but i plan to just use this to piddle around with and whatnot i just want to uh be able to carry it over there and uh do some stuff try it out make a video for you guys and i uh, got some stuff over there we can clean up and whatnot and uh so that's what we're going to do throw it on the old gooseneck and it's not like i'm going down the interstate or anything like that um, just a little two-lane road not going to get in no hurry um, i do have good uh, or excellent trailer brakes i've replaced all the brakes on this trailer and made sure all the wiring was everything correct so we got good trailer brakes and everything so we should be safe on that end so uh, let me get this thing pulled out of here. I backed it in here so I can see, get it all chained down. And I want to check the air and the tires. It's been a while since I checked them. So got all that done. Let's get this thing pulled out of here and we'll ease down the road. I'm going to put this thing in manual fourth. That way it will uh, not try to shift up because it ain't going to do any good. We don't need fifth gear no faster than we're going. driveways on a, a decent little incline and I do have a tune on this thing a 80 horse two tune and I do have an exhaust brake built into that tune so it closes the veins on the turbo gives an exhaust break. There's a programmer if you can see that or a monitor. That's exhaust temps and mile per hour and all that. I'm just going to leave her in uh, fourth gear. We're turning about 2200 RPMs. I don't know how well this camera is picking up at nighttime, but that's about what we're at, about 2255. That's, uh, that's about all we need. about 60 there then doing a pretty good little hill right here things doing okay uh, the fuel gauge is going down pretty quick fourth gear converters lock about 1160 on the EGTs 
58 mile I actually gain in speed going up the hill and back out of it a little bit. So our transmission temperature is up about 154. Um, I think that's about normal. What I usually see, you know, towing my tractor or whatever, it's about 75 degrees outside, something like that. Going up a little slight hill there. These Allisons seem to stay pretty cool. Oh, Allison works pretty good. It'd be nice if I had a Cummins in front of it. Old Duramax is all right. At least the old LBZ I got here is. I don't know about the new stuff. Old fuel gauge is going down pretty quick though. I know that much. It was a quarter tank when we started off. We're down about an eighth of a tank now. Be honest, I can't really tell a whole lot of difference uh, in towing this and towing my tractor. I know it's heavier, but as far as feeling in the truck, I really can't tell much difference. And I know my tractor weighs 12,000 pounds. I've scaled it. This dozer should be around 17. So it should be about 5,000 pounds more. Somewhere there about. Could be plus or minus a little bit, you know. So we're going to make a turn down here. And, uh, I am going to use the, the brakes and uh, we're going to see if I can get this thing coming down to a stop pretty good. So I'm on the brakes there. And you see we're slowing it on down there. And so that was, uh, that was only about four volts on the brakes, on the brake controller. I looked over and it was about three and a half to four volts. Um, if I would have reached over there and grabbed it by hand and put 14 volts in the brakes, it would have uh, went ahead and slowed on down a lot better. We're almost there now. We don't like far at all. It's a little windy, little old hilly, curvy, windy little road here we're on. I don't know if you can see where we're going or not. It's kind of dark out. Going up a little hill. Exhaust brake, it's, it's not as good as the exhaust brake on the newer Cummins, probably, um, but it definitely, definitely helps. And uh, you know, it, it's way beats not having one because I'd be having to ride the brake right now, and I'm not even touching the brake. We're going down this hill, and you can see that it's holding it back there a little bit. gas temps is uh, a lot better. This truck uh, was tuned by Duramax Tuner and uh, they seem to do a really well, a good job at keeping the exhaust temps in check. Like I say, that's an 80 horse, 160 foot pound tune on top.
top of this LBZ, I think made 660 factory. So they're 800 foot pounds or better. So it's up there, you know, with the with the newer trucks, even though it's an older truck. And it pulls good. You've seen, you had no kind of trouble taking off or going up any of these hills or nothing. Transmission temperature is all in check. Engine temps about normal. I don't know, or 210 or so. Fuel gauge, fuel gauge is not doing so well. Fuel gauge done got tired. It's about to go take a nap. But everything else is lovely. make a turn up here I'm gonna start easing on the brakes there and you hear the exhaust brake come on I mean you see it's it's not putting hardly any any trailer brakes on I'm barely on the brake and we come all the way down to pretty much a stop and make a turn All right, guys, we got the dozer unloaded. I did not try to uh, film anything. It was dark or whatever. I'm going to get some video footage uh, doing some cleanup and stuff over there with the dozer. But uh, I went up. I had about five gallons of fuel in my transfer tank. I put that in there to satisfy the old fuel gauge there to get up off the laying down on the red. And uh, so we're easing back toward the house now. Um, I do still have the trailer behind me because I may wind up carrying uh, the tractor over there as well. I really need an excavator, but I don't have one. So we can make do with a tractor and a dozer doing what we got to do and get it done. But it's going to take longer and be more work. But we can get some of that stuff cleaned up. Um, if you wonder why the check engine light is on there, that's because it's a GM. If you have a GM, uh, the check engine light is supposed to be on. No, it's it's uh, it's a glow plug indicator light. Um, it is whenever you turn the key on, the glow plug indicator light does not come on. That's what the check engine light is. I'm sure somebody would be interested in knowing. So I don't know why they make the check engine light come on for that silliness, but anyway, that's the reason it's on. Um, I guess I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up and uh, we'll get back to the house and then we will uh, see what we have going on in the next video. We'll get over there and, and do a little bit of cleanup. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.